my name is Michelle and I am here to show you how to set up and use the Parapack transport ventilator. First we are going to get our circuit set up on the machine. Um, we'll let you know that sometimes depending on what circuit we receive, we have to use a couple of adapters in order to get the circuit to hook up with the filter on the port which is located here on the side of the machine. In the event you end up with one of the circuits that does not click right onto the filter so the filter can sit flush, we use one of our larger adapters with a 15 by 22. This will attach to the bacteria filter which will then go onto the port right here. For time constraint purposes today, we're just gonna pop it right on there so that I can show you what to do. A couple of things while I'm doing this. First is, if you are on your way to MRI, please, please check to make sure that you have grabbed the proper Parapack. We only have one in the rotation that is actually MRI compatible. It's pretty obvious that it is the one. This is not it, by the way. Um, it has a very large laminated sign on it saying MRI compatible and it also lets you know that that is the only MRI compatible transport vent in the house. So if you're on your way to MRI, please just make sure. If you're unsure, please come find somebody and we'll be more than happy to make sure that you've grabbed the right piece of equipment. So to continue, this is our Parapack circuit. We put a bacterial filter on the open end. Bacterial filter fits right up to the parapack. This will obviously be what connects to your patient. For today, we're just going to use a test lung so that we can see how amazing it is. On the patient end of the circuit, you're going to want to attach an HME. There's no other way to provide humidification to your patient other than with the HME, so please don't forget about this. One of the very first things that I check before I even take the Parapack out of the clean room, once I take that plastic equipment cover off, the first thing I'm doing is checking tanks. This is a completely pneumatic dependent system. If you are not hooked up to some kind of gas, which would obviously be oxygen in this case, this machine does not work. You don't want to be the person that did end up having to go on a trip that ended up being longer than you expected, finding out that your ventilator is no longer ventilating because you've run out of gas. So I'm just a helpful hint, check your gas first. Ideally, you're going to be hooking up to a quick connect at whatever, sorry, at whatever destination you're going to, I strongly suggest using their O's. That, that's always going to be the best bet for you. However, it isn't always the way that it happens. So that's just another thing to keep in mind. You do not want to run out of gas. So we are going to hook up to our oxygen source quick connect. Okay, we now have a gas source. What we've also done is we have determined some very basic ventilator settings based on patient's ideal body weight, which we are able to determine by height in inches and some math. You are also able to determine that from your badge buddy that tells you height in inches in a predicted body weight along with Tidal volume in milliliters per kg for four, five, six, seven, and eight. So for today, we are going to say that our patient is 67 inches tall, which gives us a predicted body weight of approximately 66 kilograms. And in order to deliver eight mils per kg of tidal volume to this patient, we need to have our tidal volume right around 525. 530. So let's do that first. Again, not the most 
accurate, but you can pretty well guess where 530 is going to be. You'll notice here we go from 5 all the way to 800. So I'm going to say right in the middle is probably a little bit closer to 700. So in this case, I would just move it maybe one little scooch past the hash mark on the 500 number. It is approximate. We know that. In the meantime, you're going to want to look above your tidal volume to determine your frequency, always known as respiratory rate. Since this is usually used in a transport situation, um, depending on whether you're coming from ED or you're coming from ICU, you would either match the ventilator settings that your patient is already on, or again, we'll be picking some generic vent settings. So let's go for a rate of about 18, which seems to me should be just shy of the hash mark that shows 20. We'll put them on 100%. We are going to adjust our um, relief alarm for pressure, which we basically know as your peak pressure, peak inspiratory pressure. Um, of course, that's going to be a very patient-dependent number, but assuming that this patient has no kind of restrictive lung situation that I have to worry about right now, I'm going to set it right around 40 or so. Um, you'll notice that the ball inside here has turned white because it's attached to oxygen. When I disconnect from the wall, you'll notice that the little ball inside of here is red, telling you that you do not have a gas supply. I haven't even turned it on yet. This is able to tell me that before I even turn it on. So let's get our gas back in the wall. Back to white. We have our circuit set up, our patient is ready, and we are going to turn it on. That beep lets you know that you're getting close to your peak pressure limit. You are able to adjust peep if you need to. Here on the circuit, each one of them comes with its own peep valve, so we'll go for five. And you are now ventilating and oxygenating your patient on the Parapac transport ventilator.